Okay, find all the values of x in the range between 0 and 360 satisfying this equation here, okay? Now, when you look at this, right, th this sort of should sort of remind you, it looks a little bit like a quadratic equation, doesn't it? The only trouble is, though, is that these are different functions, right? They're different functions. So we can't really think of it that way at the moment because this is a sine function, that's a cos function. But because that's squared, you know, and this one isn't squared, you know, you, you think of it like a, a, sort of a, a sort of straightforward quadratic domain. We have two brackets. So what I'm going to do, right, in order to solve this, okay, I'm going to use a result, a rule, okay, which we need to know for the exam. And basically, sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. In other words, the square of sine x, okay, that just means sine x times sine x, and the square of cos x, cos x times cos x, when you add them, the total will always equal 1, right? So I'm going to use that rule now for uh, manipulating this equation. So I've got then 2 sine squared x plus cos x minus 1 equals 0. Now when you see this, right, we cannot change the cos x, right? The cos x has to stay as cos x, right? Okay, there's nothing we can do with that. But we can actually change the sine squared x. Reason being is we've got this rule here, okay? So we can say, look, since sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, I could rewrite this so that we get sine squared x in terms of the rest of it. In other words, what I can say is, look, sine squared x, okay? What I can say is equal to 1, and I can take that cos squared x over. Does that make sense? If I take it over, it becomes a minus cos squared x, okay? So now that rule becomes this here. Okay, we've just taken it over to the side, and it becomes sort of like a, a different way of looking at the rule. And what we can do then is we can sub this result into here. Okay, so sub into our equation. Okay, and if you think about it then, we've got, we, well, we've got 2 in front. But sine squared x then, I can replace it with that, 1 minus cos squared x. I can substitute it in. And because it's two terms, I'll put it as a bracket, right? And then plus cos x minus 1 equals 0. Now, um, I'm going to multiply that bracket out. Okay. Multiply the bracket out. And then I've got um, this then result. Now, I'll, I'll simplify this. So I'll put the cos squared x at the start, or minus 2 cos squared x at the start, plus cos x. And then, because it's 2 take away 1, that'll become plus 1, yeah? And that will equal 0, okay? Now, this now looks much more like a quadratic that I'm almost happy with, and they're all in terms of cos now. So they're all in terms of the same function, which is ideal. The only thing I'm not happy with is the fact that this is a minus here, okay, in front. I'm never happy with a minus in front of the square term. So what I'll do is I'll divide by minus 1, and I'll change all the signs, and I'll get them, um, my um, quadratic. So I'm going to solve this now. I'm going to factorise it. And when I factorise it, if you remember, whatever number's in front there, okay, I use this multiply add thing. So because I've got 2 there, I'm going to do 2 times minus 1. So that, so that multiplies minus 1 times the 2, multiplies to give minus 2. And you've got to add up to the number that's in front here, which is just minus 1, isn't it? Okay. And then when I do my two brackets, this time I'm not going to just put 2x in both of them because, you know, it's, it's in terms of cos x here. So I'm going to actually put 2 cos x in, in both of them, okay, all right, and then I've got to decide what numbers goes goes here. Now, what multiplies to give minus two adds up to give minus one. Well, two and one is the only numbers I can think of, and to, to get them to add up to give minus one, that needs to be negative two, doesn't it? And that needs to be positive one, okay. That's the only way it, it will work, and it does multiply then to give minus two. So put that in. But don't forget then, because I times by 2 at the start using this method, I need to divide by 2 then, don't I? Okay. Right? And you can see in that first bracket, there's a factor of 2 there. Okay? So I can take 2 out. Second bracket, there's no factors. Right? And it will then cancel with that 2 there. Right? So now you notice you've got two brackets. Right? You've got this bracket and this bracket. Okay? And either of them are equal to 0. So you can say, look, either the first one is equal to 0 or... The second one is equal to zero. Okay, either that bracket zero or that bracket zero. And in this case, then cos x will equal to one. Okay, and in this case, well, if I take the one over, it becomes minus one. Okay, so I get that two cos x is minus one, and then take the two over, cos x equals minus a half. Okay, fantastic. So notice I've got now two trig functions I need to solve. 
Now what's great is if one, if the, in this case now is equal to one, I can just use the graph to get those solutions. I don't need to use my calculator. I'll show you now in a minute about that. But this one, of course, we'll do cos to the minus one, won't we, of minus a half to work out what it is. So I do that on my calculator. Cos to the minus one of minus a half. That comes out to be 120 degrees. Okay, so I'm then going to um, draw my um, trig graph. Now, when I draw my trig graph, it's got to be between 0 and 360, yeah? Okay, so um, quite simply, remember when we measured this, you could go every 2 centimetres um, to be 90 degrees, right? Or every 3 centimetres is your choice. Maybe we go every 3 this time. Whatever fits in, really, and that's going to fit in nicely. And we'll put, we'll put 1 up here, okay? And we'll put minus 1 there, okay? And 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees, okay? Now, if you um, don't know what the cos graph looks like, remember, you can simply use your calculator and type in, okay? You can type in cos 0, can't you? Okay, and cos 0 comes out to be 1, okay? So it literally goes there. You could then go back then and change that to a 90, and cos 90 is 0, Okay, you could then go back and change that to 180, um, and cos 180 comes to be minus 1. Right? You could just keep going like that, and cos 270 is actually 0, cos 360 is um, 1. Right? It looks like it's a kind of a V, but it's got to be a wave function. So when I do a wave here, remember now, it's like that, right? Okay. All right? And then we're going to solve the results. Now, remember now the first one, the second one here was minus a half, okay? So minus a half is about there, isn't it? Okay? And we draw a line to work out what those two values are, those two results are. Well, we've got a result there, which is 120, and we've got a result here. So, to, so that result there is 120. To get that result, remember by symmetry, you think of us sliding down here, so we're going to slide down there, so it'll be 360 minus 120, okay? Um, to get the results where cos x is equal to 1, as I said, we just use the graph. Notice it's equal to 1 there, and it equals to 1 there. So it equals to 1 when it's 0 degrees, and equals to 1 when it's 360 degrees. Okay, so final answer then, with all the results, we got 0, 120, that becomes 240, and then 360 to finish off. Okay, so I've got them there.